हेलो फिजियो फ्रेंड्स आई एम सुदर्शन जोशी इंस्ट्रक्टर फ्रॉम गॉन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फिजियो स्किल इनहांसमेंट प्रोग्राम टुडे वी आर केम अप विद न्यू केस स्टडी ओवर वन कॉमन पोस्टर प्रॉब्लम इट इज फॉरवर्ड हेड सो दिस वीडियो इज डिवाइडेड इनटू थ्री सेक्शन वन इज केस सेकेंड इज ट्रीटमेंट एंड थर्ड पार्ट इज डिस्कशन सो बी विद अस वॉच फुल वीडियो एंड लेट्स स्टार्ट A father of a female patient aging 26 year came to us inquiring about her poor posture as she had a forward head posture we gone through number of exercises of neck but unable to fix it can you can you assess the problem correctly and suggest a suitable treatment we assessed her thoroughly with some passive and active movements and postural stability test and came to a conclusion that Yes, definitely we can help to reverse her head attitude. So actually, their attention was on forward head, but they missed some important point that she also having a rounded shoulder as well as upper thoracic kyphosis. Yes, forward head is only the presentation; it's a picture, and there are three important factors they. are contributing in making the presentation of forward head first one is head presentation it includes first upper cervical so upper cervical extension and lower cervical flexion second thing is that upper thoracic kyphosis and third thing is that rounded shoulder yes these are the three factors and these all are present in forward head presentation with different different combinations in different different individuals so what we require we require to differentiate what are the exact combination and if you want to change presentation how to interfere so after assessment it's time for treatment so we started our first part of treatment session so we start releasing Releasing of short suboccipital muscle. Second, sternocleidomastoid. Third, upper trapezius, especially clavicular fibers. Fourth, anterior sclerenoid. Fifth, sternal fascia. Sixth, upper rectus abdominis. And after releasing this. we just asked how are you how is you feel and she said wow amazing and i am able to perform my chin tuck activity in further ranges and in pain free manner which i am not able to perform earlier that's great wow patient was satisfied but this didn't satisfy us because in brown concept we always believe to treat the root cause so started second part of our session in the second part we released her gastrocnemius complex which was earlier short and tight as well as activated her glutes and then again reassessed wow now a big change in her posture her head perfectly aligned without her conscious effort that's what we want after that started third part of our treatment and in with that we released ankle retinocula and prescribed few home exercise program that are especially included eccentric training for the gastrocnemius complex strengthening part of glutes and some rotatory mobility for the thoracic spine so for acquiring or sustain or maintaining a correct posture what we require we require our center of mass should be within the base of support and this is fulfilled by our motor control system via balance strategies we all are familiar what are they they are automatic 
occur within 18 to 90 millisecond after the threat of instability perceived and we all are familiar with these three terms ankle strategies hip strategy step strategy and suspensory strategies so now i want to put light on less discussed movement so when you push someone to elicit the ankle strategy simultaneously head is also forward and this was an attempt of motor control system to bring your COG within the base of support which are going suddenly posterior due to push. Yes, forwarding head is a strategy or an attempt by motor control system to bring your COG within the base of support. If this particular strategy has a long duration or sustained due to a sustain of stimulus or longer duration of stimulus present. Now there will be adaptive shortening and lengthening in the muscles those are involved in control of neck and thus a motor strategies, a motor response change into a posture, forward head posture. So now let's start discussing the sequence of event that are occurred from the response of our motor control system to prevent our COG falling posterior to our base of support. And one can observe this by standing on inclined surface and slowly or progressively increase the level of inclination. So what was the first event? Once you exposed first force that creates a posterior shift of your COG from your base of support. First of all, ankle dorsiflexus, they get activated along with your bilateral sternocleidomastoid. If we increase further inclination, what next? So the next was your toe dorsiflexus. At this stage, few one can feel that their toes are leaving the ground. So just dorsiflexion of toes along with activation of your trapezius, especially clavicular part. So in the first step there was activation of esternocleidomastoid, in second step activation of trapezius. This increasing your forward head translation. If you will further increase the level of inclination, now what? So the next step was activation of your quadriceps. So quadriceps making an attempt to pull your body forward, especially your femur and ilium over a stabilized tibia just to pull your COG within base of support and along with your activation of pectorals and deltoid. So now it provides you a presentation of rounded shoulder with a flexed arm. Next step. If further we inclined, we progressively incline the surface. So if further we incline the level, what happens? Now suspensory activity start. So there is flexion of your hip and knee. It's just an attempt to bring your COM, center of mass, nearer to the base of support. And if you will further increase the level of inclination, your step strategies came into light. So that was a small discussion explaining the relationship between the balance strategy and forward head posture. Now start to classify the causes of forward head posture. So for that we classified into three things that is standing and derivative posture, sitting and derivative posture and demand of breathing. So now let's start with standing and derivative postures. In sagittal plane, if we will discuss in sagittal plane, a postural misalignment that 
obviously non-structural. We can classify it into five sections: kyphotic, kyphonodotic, lordotic, swayback, and flatback. Out of these five, only three have a forward head factor. So let's start with one by one to discuss what are the causes. So if you will see a kyphotic posture, you will just see a attempt of body to balance the COG within the base of support. And if you are seeing, it's very obvious to balancing each other so that our center of gravity will fall within the base of support. Almost same thing with the kyphoscoliotic posture. Three segments are especially involved. Thoracic spine, lumbar spine. So one is moving here, second one is there, and again head is forward. And the third one is the sway back. So if you will see the sway back again, you are seeing. Just observe the ankle. So if you will see, ankle is in plantar flexion. So more uh, COG is falling towards posterior, compensated by a recurvatum at knee, and again came into the balance position. After that, same thing. Pelvic goes further, followed by the thoracic spine, and then result is head forward. So uh, in a gist, I want to tell you just. Compensation one over one, one over one. So they are just adjusting one segment over another segment to just balance the COG within the base of support. And if we are intelligent enough that we can discover why this forward head is there, we just need to evaluate the sequence from the feet till the whole body in sagittal plane to. Just evaluate what is the sequence, why this head is moving forward, and once we are evaluate this, it is very easy to dissolve the forward head posture. So now the next point is sitting and derivative postures, and that contributes most because at this time sitting is more increased than compared to the standing and walking. So. Uh, in that sitting derivative postures, first thing is that iliofemoral dissociation, or you can say the freedom between ilium and femur, and if it is less than 90 degree, if it is less than 90 degree, and if it is not available more than 90 degree, and one person sit, you can see in picture that once it is less than 90 degree, it pushes your COG posteriorly. And to bring it forward, you need to a thoracic flexion as well as a forward head. And what are the two responsible factors for the iliofemoral dissociation? The two most common is that tight hamstring and tight and short glutes. So they are the responsible for association between ilium and femoral. Second most thing important. Most of the time, a wrong sitting surface, or you can say wrong chair. And if your chair is inclined, that is up from your knee side and down from your back side. So, an inclined sitting can further increase the problem. Third one is demand of being forward. It's like just to work on computer or you work on your desk with once you require to sit with backrest. So demand of being forward also increased forces to bring your head forward. So these are the sitting and derivative postures. Now third one was demand of breathing. So uh, any posture or any diaphragmatic dysfunction or breathing dysfunction that restricts your diaphragm to descend down effectively because once you inhale your diaphragm descend down so any dysfunction that restrict that descent of diaphragm 
what will happen we will get short of b to compensate that short of b what we require we required our accessory muscles and once accessory muscles came into action what will happen so scm pectorals trapezius when they are came into action again forward head posture so that's the three important factors standing and derivative sitting and derivative and demand of breathing that causes a postural change especially forward head posture so at last a uh, few discussion over the treatment part why we released few set of muscles so what we call especially short sub occipital muscles rectus capitis posterior minus and obliquus capitis superior under one is sternocleidomastoid upper fiber of trapezius especially clavicular fibers and anterior scalenae so if you will see the orientation of all these muscles are in inclined direction so they have an inclined direction so that they have a potential to make your head forward so now we are progressing towards the last part of our case study it's a philosophy of treatment why we adopted a sequence of treatment method so we used three step philosophy first thing we released all muscles that get adaptively shortened especially over the neck so at least we gain some range for the chin tuck or neck retraction after completing this release the second thing we all sort of the global influencers or you can say global factors that compelling our motor control system to place our head forwardly for control of or for the maintenance of cog within the base of support so uh, in the second step rule out all the causes what are actually influencing what are the global causes that influencing my motor control system so that my motor control system placing my head forwardly and the third step it's about the home exercise program so in home exercise program our aim is to just adequacy of length tension relationship so all those who get adaptively shortened we will choose a eccentric control so that they get appropriate length tension relationship and conversely those get adaptively lengthened we will choose a concentric loading and the third part is that mobility and especially mobility for the thoracic spine so that's what about the case study of forward head posture so what you feel about this case study did you like it or you want to add some more suggestions so please write your comments we always welcome suggestions we'll meet you very soon with new case study take care bye bye